and let's go further with the periodization after which i will show also a presentation of the technical and tactical uh, development so here when we speak about the periodization we must understand what are the periods for the periods we speak about uh, microcycles. Microcycle is a shortest period of training from three to 10 days, usually one week. Then we go to macrocycles, which are bigger training periods from uh, six to 12 weeks, for example, where our training periods macrocycles as a, for example, general physical preparation or specific physical preparation or direct preparation. These are the macrocycles. Mesocycles is a bigger, it's uh, including all the macrocycles and microcycles. So in this, we have to also understand why is periodization needed? We, we spoke about preparation and competitions. So well, mainly two cycles. One is preparation, including itself, in itself general preparation and specific preparation and there is a competitions pre-competitions direct preparation to the competitions and main competitions and after that we go to transition period this is the first model uh, made by matveyev 1967 so way back where he, this was one of the first one uh, who started to the in, research what is happening after we have different volumes and intensity. So you, you see here intensity curve and volume curve. Volume means kilometers, minutes of training, etc. So when the volume gets higher is maximum, you must uh, lose the intensity. And usually in general preparation, the volume is higher, it's getting higher, all the time, as you remember in American way of preparation, there was preconditioning. So first week we do introductory, introductory workout with low intensity and with low volume. Then we go higher with the volume, also the intensity raises. The intensity will raise and will be higher than the volume in specific preparation period. This is where the curves meet together. So. What does it mean? Uh, stress loads from the trainings uh, are both high with volume and with intensity. But when both are high, the stress is even higher. So we have to get rid of the other. So we make less rounds in preparation, less time, and we raise the intensity. Intensity in Strength preparation, for example, is the percentage of uh, one repetition maximum or heart rate. We go to, we spoke yesterday about maximum heart rate, which was close to 195, 200. So the heart rate level is going up. If here we can have in general preparation period, we have long distance running for 10 kilometers with a low intensity. So here already we have uh, running drills with 100 meters to raise the intensity and the heart rate goes up and the speed of the exercise also goes up. If in this period, general preparation period, we do general partner exercises, here we start task sparring and, and sparring sessions. That will raise the intensity of, uh, of the exercise. So <clears throat> when going to pre-competition period, the intensity was really high and volume was low. And this was the main competition. In main competition, the volume gets higher, intensity uh, gets a little bit down. And in transition period, both of them go down again. So this was the first model produced in 1960 seven by uh, Matveyev. A, new a newer model, if you remember yesterday, we were speaking about a European uh, way of preparation. So actually here we have a 
this, this kind of preparation. We had uh, two blocks, first block ending with a target competition and second block ending with a target competition. So in first preparation, we had general preparation, specific physical preparation and competition, including itself in itself pre-competition. Then the second preparation period with general preparation, specific preparation and pre-competition and competition period. And after that, it comes the transition. So the intensity curve here goes higher and crosses before the competition period starts. So already at the specific preparation, we start doing the sparring sessions. Of course, these are the models uh, produced for every sport. So this is sports science, general sports science, but same applies for boxing, for basketball, for ice hockey. So we have more games, we have more sparring sessions here than here. And the same happens again in, in the second preparation period. In uh, long-term preparation, the periodization you can see here includes in itself general preparation, specific preparation, pre-competitive phase and main competitions, including itself in main competition periods, unloading specific preparation and main competition. It means training camps, training camps, specific training camps, uh, etc. And here again is uh, the transition period. So this is Ozolin, the famous Russian researcher also, which included not only volume and intensity, but also the total stress. Total stress line, you can see here, is raising hand in hand with the intensity. The bigger intensity, the bigger stress. We can lose the volume because, you know, sometimes we, when we do really um, low intensity workouts like running on the long courses, having uh, different games, walking around, it releases our stress also. It's a good, good relaxation method to go outside and walk in the forest, making it with very low intensity heart rate maybe 70, 80 to 100. It's a good for recovery. So here they started already to think on the recovery as well. And soon we are going to speak about super compensation and this everything is based on homeostatic state of the human, human body. So what is homeostatic state? Homeostatic comes from Greek word, it means, um, everything in a, in a good dimension. Homeostasis is the, is the steady state of, of human being in normal, normal life. <clears throat> and here we see already when we have a more uh, intensive workouts, which are also have a different curves. So there is uh, intensity and volume getting higher getting lower and getting higher. So preparation period towards the competition, you can see here is a little bit different. It has several curves. So we raise the volume, we raise the intensity, we do a little break, like a transition period. Like remember I spoke about Russian way. So we have a general physical preparation and then we have a one week rest. Then we have specific preparation and we have one week rest. Pre competition preparation, one week rest, and have a competition. So here you can see already the waves. It's not just going curves up and curve down, but also because of uh, studying the, the action and response of the human body, we have to understand what is good. We cannot train uh, forever and uh, raise the level of our results. But we have to understand when we have to ease the training and when we have to uh, raise the intensity, 
it's a, it's a it's a big picture it's a big mosaic and you and different people respond to this individually then you must understand how do you build up the weekly cycles we are, if we speak about microcycle so we can have different kind of uh, microcycles uh, one peak microcycle is used generally in uh, general preparation period it means that we have uh, workouts with lower intensity and with a higher volume. So you see the intensity here. Mm, we can think this as a heart rate from 50 to 80% from maximum heart rate is light training. 80 to 90% from our maximum heart rate is, is medium and high is 90 to 100. So starting with a light training on Monday, continuing with a medium level training on Tuesday and Wednesday and raising up the level to, to maximum in on Thursday. Then we lose the intensity during the moderate uh, intensity training on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday light training and rest on Sunday. So in this way we can also uh, raise the level of volume. Two peak microcycles, uh, we have less volume, but we raise intensity constantly. So for example, we have light training on Monday, moderate training on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, we have a maximum intensity training. Then we want to have recovery for Thursday and we do light training. Friday, we do moderate training again, and Saturday, maybe you have sparring or some uh, harder training session, interval training, here and total recovery on Sunday. Another type of uh, advanced microcycle means that intensity is, is more higher. If, if the previous one here is uh, at the beginning is very good for specific uh, preparation, at the beginning of a specific, specific preparation, but as you remembered, we raised the intensity and volume both towards the pre-competition period. So here, as it happens, so on, on Monday, we have moderate intensity training. On Tuesday, we have a high intensity training. Wednesday, Thursday, both moderate intensity and Friday, high intensity training again and Saturday moderate and Sunday rest. So here it's considered to have a two hard sparring sessions both days, or we can also add another training for these days to, to make it more stressful. If we go to weekly competitions, it means we have to lose the stress, lose the intensity, so if competitions are on Saturdays, so every Saturday is a competition, so intensity is in maximum. It means after their hard intensity training, we have to recover. So Sunday is total, total rest. On Monday, we start light training. We go to moderate training and higher intensity training, so maximum, and here, we lose the intensity again, go to light training before the competition to have a better recovery. When we start to build up the, the training uh, cycles, so usually also training with uh, one training per day cycles, in general preparation period, two, three plus one model is uh, most sufficient and also most used. When we go towards the specific preparation period, two plus one means that intensity gets higher. But also the same we can do in, in uh, two training sessions, professional boxers, professional level boxers, mm, in Olympic boxing also train at least twice a day. So it means we have morning training session, evening training session, morning training session and rest at the evening. So it means on Monday, we have two trainings, Tuesday, one training, Wednesday, two trainings, 
Thursday one training, Friday two trainings, Saturday one training, and Sunday is the rest. So this is uh, added to the graphics as I, as I showed you, where how we can also raise the level of, of and volume, volume and intensity of the exercises. In this way, you can uh, think that these morning trainings, as it is in, in Finland, is organized uh, in sports academies. So students who learn in sports academies, in secondary uh, school age, it means 15 to 18, they go uh, to morning trainings before their classes start. So this is usually physical preparation for coordination, speed, strength, or endurance. So they train every morning. What happens here, what makes them more professional is the morning training sessions that add the volume and intensity of the exercises. On the evening sessions, usually clubs have one Monday, Wednesday, Friday have the boxing sessions. So in this, they make only boxing. So in general preparation, you see there is mostly used uh, general exercises and less uh, specific exercises. Especially for a young age, it's better to, to raise and develop all those levels of uh, physical preparations. Of course, you can have it in a different way, but you have to think on, on the stress. In the mental stress, especially here, when you have a, people learning in the school, they have also mental stress and uh, cognitive stress because of uh, studying in the school. Another model is for higher level athletes. It's called five plus one model. And it means we have five trainings in a row before we can have a recovery session. So the same kind of trainings in the morning and specific training in the evenings, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And Saturday evening and Sunday is off. Another model, uh, if we have uh, also athletes going to the competitions, they have also on Sunday, they can have uh, one competition or sparring session. So it's called five plus one plus one model. Microcycle with compensation, super compensation curves, you can see here. What does it mean? So I, so I showed you different uh, kind of uh, volume and intensity in, in different days. So it means also it uh, will affect your body indifferently. So here are different exercises like uh, technical workout, TAs, tactical workout. Uh, S is a strength training. O2 is a aerobic training, uh, power, uh, uh, must power and uh, and speed, endurance training, speed and power training. So in different days, there are different exercises. So endurance training is not in the same day with the power, power training. So this means that you have a better recovery and you do concentrate more on, on power training. This could be uh, also a good model for a general preparation of, uh, of the boxer. The curves show us this is the homeostatic line. This is the steady state of the human body. The curves show us if we don't recover, we don't reach the homeostatic stage. So we must have easier exercises to have a better recovery and reach the line of homeostatic stage again. Then we have stronger training, we go down again, we don't reach the homeostatic stage, we have an easier training and we come through the homeostatic stage again to have a better training session. And finally, through the rest, through the rest at the end of the week, we can reach over the line, overreaching. So if we do this kind of training from week to week, it means our curve will constantly grow. So 
Here you can see the supercompensation. Probably every coach knows already about this, but uh, just, uh, just to remind you what means uh, rest and training. It's really important that we give the rest in the same proportion, proportion as, uh, as we train. So if we are before training, we are here, for example, we are throwing maybe 100 punches in one minute. So after the good training and good super compensation in next training, we can do already 105. So after a week, we can do 110. After a month, we can do 120. So our uh, speed endurance level will get better. So it's just as an example. So what happens during the training? During the training, because we are training, we lose the energy. We don't have the energy. So at the end of the training, the energy stores are empty. So we have to recover our, our energy by the glycogen in, in the muscles, by uh, having proteins after the strength training, to have a, to become to anabolic state. Otherwise, if you are in catabolic state, the muscles get sore, you don't recover, and the athlete may become injured. So it's really important you have a good recovery for the athlete to gain the supercompensation level. The, the recovery can also be sleep. So, I, I'm looking uh, for different recovery methods. Sleep is the best uh, recovery method because during the sleep, the hormone levels will get up, especially for the uh, testosterone and, and for the growth hormone. So this means our body will recover itself during the nighttime. If your athlete is staying uh, up studying or playing the computer games, he will not recover. He will, although you, you plan correctly your training, he will not recover and in the next training, he is tired. If you compare with another athlete who trains in the same volume and intensity and who is not tired after the training, so probably they do something wrong in the recovery. So same importance in the training has the recovery that the athlete must understand also uh, that they have to recover, not only by eating, eating uh, healthy, but also not getting too tired to recover from the mental stress. Uh, of course, uh, how to measure the recovery is it's not so easy. Maybe you understand you are good friends with your uh, athlete. You know how he acts. You will feel it. But one thing that uh, the athletes tell themselves, what helps them, especially the more experienced athletes, is the muscle soreness. So if the muscles get sore, it's a... Uh, it's a remark from the body that don't touch me. I want to recover. I need more time. Of course, the differences between hormonal system also differ. So if the other ones have a human uh, growth hormone in the blood more and testosterone more, they recover better. Uh, here in Finland, I have a lot of students from refugees from Afghanistan, from Turkey, and we have the Scandinavian people. So the biologic age of Scandinavian people, for example, is longer. They don't have mustaches and beard in, in 15 or 16 years old, only maybe 25. So it means, what does it mean? If we have a beard or uh, phrase of, uh, development of the muscles, it means the hormones work in the body. While the Turkish and the Afghanistan, Afghanistan guys, they have the Persians, they have birds already when they are 15. They are mustaches when they have 15. 
So it means also their level compared to the Scandinavians, 25 years old, is the same. The testosterone level is the same. The human growth hormone level is the same. So we can give them more effective exercises, which by the, by the mean affects the beast that, especially now when we look at the Finnish team, there is rarely Finnish names. There are refugees because they recover better and their biological system is different. So here where we want to have the individual approach to the athlete's performance, you have to know every athlete in your group. That's why I'm telling that in general preparation where we teach the athletes, we don't have so high intensity we can have more effective workouts with the bigger groups. Then we go to more specific, we must divide the groups for those one who are developed and who need more time to develop. So after this, we can have also the other guys to go to the competition and the others still preparing through sparring sessions. That's why I mean what I mean when I speak about novice level and basic level or specialization level boxers. After having a boxing school from three to six months, the boxer should be ready or already to go to sparrings and go to the competitions. But some of them are not. They need still more time. So don't rush with the guys. This is the biggest uh, mistake I see in Scandinavian countries they do. They take the youngsters out for the competition, having a lot of stress because of uh, overreaching. They have burnouts because they don't recover. The competition is the biggest stress to the, to the body, especially with the fear and with other reactions coming through the boxing, boxing competition. So, most important in novice and basic level for every athlete is to have enough time to develop, to go for boxing. If you see your athlete gets better, you can do them individual training plans. You can put different groups and make the different training plans for yearly planning or for, uh, for a shorter periods. It means that yes, you have you can have the common sessions. For example, I have common sessions for advanced level athletes and for the basic level athletes. We go out for running. Everybody takes their own pace, their own courses. The other ones run three kilometers. The other ones can run five kilometers in the same time. Or we go to the strength gym. We do the strength exercises. Another one makes the bench press with 50 kilos, while another one makes only with a bar. So this is where we can differ with the individual training plans in the bigger groups. But of course, when speaking about boxing, if the boxer is ready, he's not ready. So it's useless to give somebody to beat them up because it will raise the mental stress and probably the athlete never gets ready. Also, maybe he is very talented, but it's not only his time. So you have to understand also the preparedness of the athletes uh, through the different bodies, different cultures, different uh, body structure also affects to here. The taller, taller ones, the heavyweights usually um, get adults older than the lightweights. So somebody like Amir Khan can be 17 competing in the Olympic final. But we never seen 17 years old boxers in the Olympic final in heavyweights. The usual age of the heavyweights when they reach the, the maximum result is 22 to 25. Yeah, there are different uh, uh, examples. Uh, somebody gets gets a shorter preparation through shorter preparation earlier becomes there, but usually the, the higher weight categories need more time to become an adult because they, they, it takes longer to develop. 
the body works differently. So this supercompensation is for one training, but we can think training by training. We don't reach, we don't overreach after every training. If we stay under the line, we must understand what is uh, the situation of the athlete. Best way, of course, to, is to measure the pulse in the mornings. So if, if it's constantly 60, it's normal. If the pulse uh, starts to raise, it's 70, it's 80. So it means that uh, there is uh, too much stress for an athlete. He doesn't recover. If the pulse gets uh, lower and after a month it's 50, it means you have done correct exercises and recovery is, is good for the athlete. Best uh, professional boxer, boxers have uh, heart rate like 30 beats in, in a minute with a good endurance level. In, in track and field, in, in uh, other sports also 40 is uh, pretty common. It means that the um, heart muscle is much stronger. So it doesn't have to uh, contract so many times. So we must consider the heart also as a muscle, as a pump that uh, pressures the fluids to the, to the muscles, giving the nutrition, uh, oxygen, and also brings all the other stuff away from the muscles, like lactate and CO2. OK, this is the main thing about the periodization. We won't talk along about periodization because, uh, because uh, this is only in two stars when we start uh, making already with the curves weekly planning, exact weekly planning, what kind of exercises, what there is the intensity, it's the next level. First of all, you have to understand what is uh, in a, what happens in one training and what happens in a, in a bigger bigger periods like uh, one year one year training. So, how should the curve look like in in one training? In one training, the workout plan looks like this. As you remember, I showed you the one day training plans yesterday with a pre lesson. It means we gather, we line up the athletes, the heart rate is above 70. Short discussion, five minutes, then we start the preparatory part. It means the warm up. So the heart rate level gets uh, to, from 100 to 120. Then we start with a main part the main part in between the rounds the round breaks here is uh, the recovery of course in boxing it, it's a little bit different this is a general in boxing it's different it, it recovers to 150 it goes up to 180 it comes down again so in in boxing because we we use the rounds for training it's more like interval method in interval method all, always the time matters the workload and recovery time so in main parts, we work with higher intensity and in conclusion, in cool down, we lose the intensity and also we lose the temperature of, of the body. Post lesson, uh, debriefing, uh, giving the feedback, listening the feedback from the, from the athletes and then also relaxation exercises to cool down. So this is what happens every time. And after this, we must understand what happens. If the training was very intensive, if the training was really hard, probably they won't be recovered in next day. So we, that's why, because boxing is very intensive for the novice basic level athletes, most common is one, one day training, one day off, one day training, one day off, one day training, two days off, Monday, Wednesday, Friday are the training groups. Another training group with another level could be in the same days or days between Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So you have to work with athletes every day. Of course, it depends of the possibilities of the environment. In the training camps, 
you have a constant training uh, for, uh, for everybody. You may do, do the groups uh, by the levels and have another one's training twice a day, another one's three, three times a day. But also for everybody, you have to uh, think what is the recovery period. Speak with the athletes, make them to measure the heart rate. Nowadays, it's really easy. You can have Garmin watches and, uh, and Sunto watches to see. It, it shows the current heart rate all the times. So it's, it's made easy. But in the training camp situations, in the peak performance training centers, there are physiologists who uh, measure the urine level, who measure the blood, what is inside and, and give the feedback to the coach. Because this is not the coach's duty to make, to make these kind of tests. Okay, so this was about periodization. Also waiting for comments and uh, questions. Yes, Daniel. Did I think that it, that is good to explain over training with a with a with a super compensation to people. When you are not yes. resting well enough, your your um, abilities goes down. So exactly. I, th I think I think it is good to explain to people uh, about overtraining on the on the periodization. Yeah, you know, either sometimes I don't understand myself. If if you don't plan well, for example, my muscles are sore now because all all uh, all the week I made uh, different videos for 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 the courses. So I do, did uh, strength exercises, running exercise, boxing exercise. So I, I feel a little bit soreness because it was unplanned. And uh, every athlete, of course, even in the highest level, maybe don't, they don't uh, feel the soreness, muscle soreness. But mentally, I see, you know, in the long training camps, especially I see guys uh coming really calm and not speaking to anyone so it, it means it's a sign already that okay something should be done good recovery method is different games football basketball but because of course injury risk in before the competition we must be very cautious isaiah what are your thoughts this um I guess isn't so much a question, but just something, a uh, topic that I like to talk about and just get other perspectives on, especially since we got a lot of different countries here, maybe different styles, but I find with the programming, the periodization preparation, obviously we want to have, the main goal is reach a high level of performance for the competition. But I find also just my experience working with boxers is that <clears throat> the the preparation is almost just as important for the training camp. Say, for example, it's an eight-week training camp where they're going to – oops, sorry, hold on. Someone's trying to call me. Uh, it's just as important for the, the fight camp. Say it's just an eight-week fight camp where they're going to be doing a lot of boxing skill, a lot of sparring. So they need to be very physically prepared, their wrists, their hands, their body for all of the contact. So – uh, just talking with different coaches, everybody seems to have a little bit different style. So I just like to get different coaches perspectives on, you know, what did they do in terms of preparation for not only the competitions, but just the training camps in general, because they can be very high intensity, very fatiguing. So how can you get your athletes through that to get not only improve, but stay healthy through them as well? Yes, it's a good suggestion. What about in Croatia? What uh, I've been in Croatia several times to have a one-star course and two-star course and uh, seen the Croatians. And because especially you have uh, good results in football, in tennis, in, in different ball games like basketball, etc. So probably they are doing something right. So what do you think in Croatia? How do you reach the highest level? What, what is the system? What are the reasons? The crazy mindset of the boxing coaches and people like them 
because the system old. So that's the only reason. Daniel can confirm this. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you know, there is a, there is a one thing, you know, about the genes. Genes are um, we are living in that part of Europe. There is always constant struggling, always constant uh, fighting, and everything else. So um, the Lipton 2006, he he proved that genes can be modified, genes can be um, activated. So I think we we live in that part of Europe that we are always struggling, we are always doing the impossible. So. Uh, you know, the, the town of Split in Croatia, it has the most Olympic uh, uh, Olympians on the, on, the, on the part of the, how much uh, um, people are living in the Split, you know. Uh, but that's, that's, that's one thing also which can be, which can be seen. But uh, what Hervo has said, there are a lot of enthusiasts, sports enthusiasts and good coaches but like in um, like in uh, other kind of small countries, the system is um, it's not it's not uh, very good. But uh, there are lots of lots of ent enthusiasts here. Yeah, I see. Uh, I think most uh, coaches in one star examination last three years have been from from Croatia from me. So it was. Two courses in, in Croatia for one star, now for two stars. And when I asked, you know, like in, in two star examinations for, for those coaches who oh, were not doing so good. So why are you here? Why, why, why do you need this? Because this is development level. And uh, we see that even the first level for you is pretty hard. No, no, we want to develop. We want to get the knowledge. We, we don't need the certification for two star because yeah, we have already one star we can go everywhere but we want to be level develop we want to new, new the new new things and constant learning also maybe there were also very good good uh, coaches and and old coach like pero veocic he doesn't speak even even english he asked for the pero others was my pero was my trainer <laughs> yeah so so he asked also, also from the others well, what the instructor said and so they had a translation also to creation but, but yeah, so you have also good, uh, good boxers from Croatia, like Kvojashep and... Uh, Trgovic, you have uh, Babic Kovic, now. Yes. Well, Alan Babic, yes. But you Gabriel, also... Gabriel Veozic. Gabriel. No, I Ezek. <laughs> okay, good. So um, in Croatia, okay, we, we think, yeah, you, you think it's a, it's a genetic reason. But also one, maybe one the environment. Part, one part. I think also the environment, the coastline. Uh, as it happens, uh, we know the average age of, of people in different parts of the world. As it happens in, in Finland, there are islands. And in the islands and close to the sea area, people have higher average living age than in inner land. So the same thing has been remarked in Okinawa Islands in, in, in uh, Japan, for example. The people live longer there. I think it's something that has the environment, also the clean water, the clean uh, air, has to do something with this, maybe nature. There's a lot of more nature than in, in inner land. So maybe also the affection of the, of the coastline, because Croatia is all the coastline. Um, yes, you have very enthusiastic uh, coaches, but also maybe good uh, possibilities to go to Germany, to go to Italy, uh, motivation. You see high, high level basketball players, Tony Kukoc, everybody wants to be like Tony Kukoc and then goes to basketball. Good examples. And football players. Yeah, we don't we don't speak about football players, of course. Yes, uh, I wanted to say something to Azaya. Azaya told something. Um, when I was in, a, in in America, when I was I was in Miami with Pedro Diaz, um, they when when someone came to the camp, they always used the CPK. You know what CPK is, right? The creatine. You know the no. You know the test. 
See yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, my internet was not very good there. But yeah, we uh, we actually use that at the training center here in Taiwan as well. We'll do that quite frequently. Yeah, they do. They use that to see the the injuries, especially mm -hmm. muscle, injuries. muscle, mm -hmm. yeah, muscle, muscle tissue. soreness. Muscle no, no, soreness. no, no, no. Muscle, muscle to, uh, injuries to the muscle tissue. It's a CPK test. So yeah, uh, especially during high volume training. Just yeah. another monitoring tool for sure. Yeah, and after that, after they see the results, they they may they they correct the training programs and training plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and I think as sports science continues to grow, uh, you're seeing more and more levels with technology and different gadgets and tests, and it's just helping to paint that bigger picture of the athlete so that you can monitor their progress, fatigue, and yeah, yeah, that's a good one. What about uh, what about uh, Asia, China, Macau, Hong Kong? What is your understanding about about um, training Taiwan as well? Maybe the style is different. Do you do, do you use uh, different protocols to measure the athletes uh, athletes level or their recovery? Like. Do you have a sport medicine specialists also participating in, in, in the club work or the teamwork or how can the boxers uh, control themselves? Anybody from Hong Kong, Macau, China, you could uh, take a word now. You need to point at them and then they will. Yeah, I, I sent a I sent a message to our group chat to see if anybody's interested. So we'll see if they want to jump in. Come on, guys. I uh, always call out Roy, but let's call out someone else. We we don't uh, put um, much pressure on, on you, but but still we want to want to hear if you understand and if you could uh, uh, open the conversation. Okay, if nobody at the moment, I would ask like to like know Tatiana uh, in, in Ukraine, what is the situation? Uh, I know that is a very good medical uh, curement system, medical uh, sports medicine, especially is in very high level. The war, of course, may have its affection to, to the medical services. But how is in Ukraine is, is delivered? Because you have been also the, the highest level athlete. How were you tested and how, how, were, how was the medical help uh, provided to you? Um, hi. So we uh, still have a sporty uh, doctor and uh, the sporty doctor always coming with team and uh, looking for uh, sportsmen. Of course, always uh, coming uh, with the mass uh, massage with massagist. Physiotherapists as well, maybe. Physiotherapy is not well uh, now. We. Uh, not using this uh, specialist, but when uh, they is uh, come back to Ukraine, they go to special uh, uh, organization and uh, looking for sportsmen. Okay, they do some tests and uh, they give the results to the coaches probably. Of course, of course. Yeah, after, they, after which the coaches understand what happens in the body. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Okay, so if, if nobody from Asia wants to speak with us, <laughs> so we, we take a little break, five, five minutes to seven minutes break. We come back here, uh, it's nine o'clock Chinese time. Three o'clock, uh, three o'clock uh, Central European time.
Okay, have a little break, walk around, make some squats, make some push ups, and see you uh, after this. We are going to review the technical tactical preparation of the athletes. I will have several separate videos. Also, some of the videos I uploaded to YouTube and to Google Drive as well. Okay. Erwin? Yes. Uh, could you just uh, put again the, the links in the WhatsApp group? Because we don't have uh, earlier messages. We cannot see the history. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mean, the, you mean the YouTube uh, YouTube videos. videos? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. 